Hey guys, what's up? Caleb Downey here with SDI, and real quick today, let's talk about suppressor mounts and where some mounts are better than others in certain situations, and other suppressor mounts are better in other situations. Let's talk about it. All right, so suppressor mounts. We're not gonna talk about direct thread, really. Those, I mean, that just directly threads the suppressor onto the barrel. There's no special QD mounting system. Direct threads, that's a different video. Let's talk about that at a different time. Right now we're talking about QD systems, which is any system, any mounting system, that is not direct thread. That's a definition I'm running off of. I don't know if that's standard, but that's what I'm talking about, all right? So, let's start off with the Yankee Hill Phantom mount. This mount here, it basically screws in the back of the suppressors. Most of their suppressors have this standard, standardized hub mount, one and three-eighths by 24, um, thread mount in the back, which allows you to utilize a lot of different companies, but in this case, same company uh, mounts. And this is a Phantom mount. This guy is basically a block of steel, not a block, but a piece of steel that threads in. It's got some little locking teeth on here that you can use some wrenches and tighten everything down so the mount doesn't come off the suppressor. And then you put that Phantom series suppressor mount on your host. And then when you go to put your suppressor on, you have a few coarse threads. And then you hit these ratchets. Once you ratchet the suppressor on, he's not gonna come off. That's the idea, and for me personally, I've never had my Yankee Hill Phantoms come off. I've had them for a long time, and they've always worked perfectly fine for me. Uh, but the, the benefit of this system is that you don't have to touch the mounting system. You can literally grab the suppressor, ratchet it on, and then ratchet it off. That is very nice, especially on systems like this that are using somewhat of a recessed muzzle device. Right, so it kind of gives that in integrally suppressed look. It's not truly integrally suppressed, but it kind of gives that look, but you don't have access to the muzzle device whenever you put the suppressor on. And that's where these guys shine because you don't have access to it, so you can't be touching things on the muzzle device. The opposite of that is what we got right here. This is a Fox Drop Mic um, upper, or rifle, and their system is exposed, right? You have a flash hider, and you can see they have coarse threads up here, and then they have these locking teeth back here. A lot of companies use a ratcheting system. We've got a couple of those we'll talk about. The Griffin Armament does not use a ratcheting system. It uses, or they do have some of those, I do believe, I believe, but not this guy. This is a dual lock, and basically it's dual lock because it has a taper lock. It uses those coarse threads. It has a taper, so it locks up. Then it has this ring that you pull down and those teeth we talked about, it's got pins on this ring that are gonna lock into those, um, those ratchets that look like ratchets and this guy's not gonna come off. So the taper seals up the can to the muzzle device and those ratchets, which aren't really ratchets, but those little divots lock in that locking ring so this guy is not coming off on accident. Now, if you pull the collar back up, twist the suppressor off, he's gonna come off. And the beauty of this system is it's very strong, very secure. Again, I've never had this guy accidentally come off, but the downside is you gotta have access to this back portion right here. If you try to use this kind of a mount on a system like this that's somewhat recessed, it's not gonna work because you can't grab that locking ring. But if your muzzle's exposed, you can do that. Here's another system very similar, but slightly different, right? So again, you have these uh, coarse threads, and then this time you do have actual locking ratcheting teeth on the muzzle device. This is a KGM R556. You're going to basically turn this guy and listen. He's gonna ratchet on, and you're gonna ratchet it till it stops. To take it off, you basically push down this little pin, which releases that ratchet, basically, and you gotta turn it until it's free of that ratcheting system, unscrew it, and he'll come right off. So again, a good mounting system, a very solid mounting system, but you gotta have access to that little pin. If you stuck that on a system like this, that'd be a bad day. Well, not really a bad day, you'd have to, it'd just be a permanent, a fixture to your firearm until you take your hand guard off so you can push that pin and ratchet everything off. So you gotta keep in mind what you're trying to do. Here's another system, I'll talk about this guy. This is a very popular one. <clears throat> this is from Dead Air, this is their Chemo. I really like these mounts. I've used them for a long time. Never had any serious problems with them. They've always worked. This is similar to the, uh, the KGM and the Griffin Armament where you line everything up, you turn it, it ratchets, and then it's locked on. And then to take the suppressor off, you grab the suppressor, you ratchet it and it comes off again. So very, it kind of a, a conglomeration of some of these different mounts to where you don't have to have access to the mount itself, right? Just like uh, the, the 
Yankee Hill, it's just like the Yankee Hill. You don't have to have access to the, the mount itself, but it ratchets similar to the KGM. For instance, we have a 300 blockout right here, and if and it has a barrel that's way back here, halfway down the uh, the handguard, and so basically what you can do is use that QD system, that Griffin armament system, ratchet it on there, and now you have what looks to be somewhat of an integrally suppressed system. Not really integrally suppressed again, but it gives that look, that vibe, and it extends your handguard out. When it's time to take the suppressor off, grab the suppressor, make sure it's not hot, and ratchet it loose. And now we just did something really bad. So the problem with this system, if you do it the wrong way, which I just did, and you tighten everything on and it's not ready to be tightened, and you go screwing and screwing, you keep keep trying to get this guy off, and you keep trying to get this guy off, basically what happens, and what can happen, this is a caution here, is that you can unscrew the mount from the suppressor. So now, I'm gonna have to take everything apart, I'm gonna have to take off that chemo adapter after I take off the handguard and get it off. Now that's a downside to some of these systems to where this guy, the KGM, right? This is all welded on here. The mount on the KGM is not gonna come off. When you use kind of universal-ish, you utilize that hub pattern and you put a different mount on the suppressor, you're gonna have to make sure for sure you lock, t uh, lock tight, I wouldn't rock set, but lock tight or at least very tightly secure that mount down, you could have problems like what I just had. So there's downsides and there's upsides to different systems. Make sure you know what you're trying to do. If you're trying to, to make a dedicated system just to leave it alone, a lot of times those direct threads, they're good to go, right? Or you get systems like the KGM that the suppressor is already built or the mount is already built into the suppressor and you don't have to worry about it. You lock it on, you leave it alone, you never really worry about it unless you got to clean it or do some kind of maintenance and at that point it's not that often that you have to take the suppressor off. So anyway guys, I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found it somewhat helpful. Um, there are tons more suppressor mounts out there. These are just some of the ones that I have and some of the ones for rifles. There's different ones for pistols, there's different ones for pistol caliber carbines, different stuff out there. A lot of different mounts will work with a lot of different suppressor manufacturers, but make sure it's gonna work for your purposes and keep these suppressors and their hosts and their little niche and their little wheelhouse and they'll serve you best that way. Hope that makes sense. Hope you found it helpful. Hope you found it interesting. Caleb Downing with SDI. Hopefully we'll catch you guys in the next video. See you.